Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with a card featuring Ink Blot Shop. Ink Blot Shop is a new shop to me and I picked up a variety of their stamp sets that appealed to me. I'm going to use three of them in the video today, but I'm going to show you a few more things I picked up just because they're fun. So I'll use the You Matter, which is the sentiment set, these lovely ladies, and they have a bunch of different little faces that you can choose from. I'm also going to use the Wild Hatch Herringbone. Ink Blot Shop has so many gorgeous backgrounds. I love them. A lot of them are out of stock right now, but check them out um, or, you know, get an email when they come back in stock because you can create so many cool uh, pattern papers, like your own pattern papers with their amazing background stamps. And I've been looking for a alphabet stamp that I can color in, but also has the extra letters. So I don't want just one L so that when I spell hello, I have to like restamp everything. So this ink blot shop set, while it is a little pricier because it's so big, it has those extra letters. And so I was so happy to find that. And I really look forward to using that one as well. So for today's set of cards, I'm going to be stamping a lovely lady and I'm going to make four different cards in the sense of they're going to have different skin tones, but the card design is going to be the same. So I cut four panels with the cat scrappiness stitch scalloped dies. And then I'm going to stamp the lovely lady and the sentiment you matter. I am going to be coloring all of these lovely ladies in different shades of a black skin tone. I mentioned in my two previous videos, I've been just trying to learn more about coloring skin tones. And as part of that, challenge myself to make 100 cards with black characters, but I'm like way past that and just enjoying um, experimenting with different colors and making sure that the cards that I make, as I've mentioned many times before, I, I donate a lot of my cards, so I just like them to be really representative. So um, I am using a cloth to help me get a good impression with the Misty. A lot of crafters do this. I know Kath Kathy Zilski always shares that tip. If you rub the cloth along there, it gives you a little bit better impression. Also standing while you stamp in your Misty can help a lot. And any, any old cloth will do, but that's just the cleaning cloth that I use. So sorry that it looks all grody and dirty. <laughs> and gro dirty? I don't know, <laughs> words. Uh, okay, so I wanna also stamp the face. You don't need a Misty for any of this. I'm just using it because I'm stamping the same thing repeatedly. And so it's a little bit easier. And so I put, I also have two Misties. So uh, again, don't, definitely don't need that. But since I have them, I was able to position the face in one and this, the um, lady in the other so that it allowed me to stamp a bunch of panels real quick and make sure they were all positioned correctly. Of course, you could just um, remove the original stamps and, and use the same Misty, but it can be helpful. Any stamp positioner is helpful when you want to stamp more than one of the same card design. So here's the wild hatch background. There are two sheets, like protective sheets on it. There's one on the part of the stamp that you would ink and then one on the front of the stamp. I'm going to leave the one on the front of the stamp because it helps me line it up in the misty a little bit better. But if you removed that, I think that the stamp might stick better to the misty. I was having a lot of trouble with it shifting. I thought if I taped it down, that would be enough but it didn't really work because this is such a, there's like a lot of stamp to it. There's not a lot of open space. And so it really grabs your paper. The stickiness of the stamp really sticks to your paper. And so when you lift the misty door open to, you know, pull off your stamp, it's going to, the stamp's going to want to stay on it and you're going to have to peel them apart and then readjust it. It still works fine. Um, I was able to get great impressions. I was able to reposition it really easily by keeping that backer stamp on there. I am using Memento Rosebud ink just because I thought this pink would go well with a lot of different colors. Flat, one of the reasons I kind of knew that pink would go well with a lot of different colors so that I could color each lady with a different shirt and different skin tones is that their pink is the color of flowers or, you know, a lot of flowers are pink. And so they're going to always look good in a bouquet with different colors. They're going to look good with green. So for whatever reason, I just kind of know that pink is a great go-to. Maybe not so much if you're making a masculine card, but um, just as a, as a thought there, I, it helped me to not have to clean my stamp in between because I didn't have to worry that I was going to contaminate the ink. So I stamped it a few times. Also, as you can see, I did not put the stamp on the misty door. I put it in the misty. 
Um, here are the skin tones, so you can pause, but you can also check my video description, and I'll say, you know, here the, here's the, in the purple shirt, this is the skin colors I use, and I'll tell you what colors the purple shirt is, and what color the skin tone is. So that's all in the video description. I'm going to color just one lady on camera, because I colored them all the same way. I just used different color combinations, and I kept the color combinations within blending families. Mixing outside of blending families can also create a lot of beautiful skin tones, but I just wanted to show you that you can keep it simple. You can also add a little bit more depth to black skin tones with a uh, BV marker. It actually works for a lot of skin tones, but um, it's a common one that I've seen suggested and I've liked using, but I wanted to, again, just keep it a little more simple. This is a pretty simple stamp set. So I'm starting with my darkest marker, which is an E37. And then I'm going to go to an E35 and a 33. I'm choosing to have a light source just because I think adding some shadows makes it, even though it's a simple stamp, makes it look a little more dynamic. So I'm having the shadow come in from the right side, or sorry, the light come in from the right side and putting some shadows along the left. So there'll be shadows where her hair meets her head. To also add a little bit of depth, I want to draw in a bit more of a nose. There's just kind of a little squiggle nose at the bottom, but I want to draw the sides of the nose. So I'm going to take my darkest marker and just draw the very uh, smallest line that I possibly can, and the same thing with my medium, and then blend it out with my light marker. I'm going to do all the lips on all the ladies the same color, E07 and E04. You always want your darkest, if you're going to use more than one color for lips, the darkest color should be on the bottom part of the lips. So that's where I put my E07. And now I'm ready to move on to the hair. One of the reasons I like this stamp set is because it featured um, ladies with a variety of different color or different styles of hair, including a curly haired lady, which um, serves well for natural black hair. So I, I liked that versatility and I thought it would allow me to create a, a variety. But um, I did so the stamp is very whimsical and her hair is a little like uneven, which is really fun, but I actually decided in this case I wanted to sort of even it out a bit just because that was the look I was wanting this particular time. I'm taking a C9 and a C5. I'm starting with a C9 and I'm making big circles and C's. Most of the time they're not complete so they're not circles, but there's some work sort of in between a C and a circle. I'm just making loops, I guess. So I'm making loops all over her head, kind of going with the artist line, but also adding a little bit more so that her hair isn't too lopsided. Um, and then it also, the, the other benefit of um, evening out the hair a bit is that I don't have to worry so much about getting inside the lines. In general, I don't have to worry about getting inside the lines because my C marker, my C9, is so close to the black of the artist drawn lines that it allows me to just sort of make the swirls any way I want. Now, if you were trying to color this stamp blonde, for instance, the artist drawn lines might be more of a guide. But I actually think with the curly hair, you're not really trying to keep it within the bounds of the line. So that is kind of fun if you're not like an expert at coloring hair, but you still want a fun stamp set. This one might be nice just because that curly loose style really lends itself to just being a little bit uh, more fun with your coloring and loose and not having to worry about what direction is the hair going. So to color in the shirts, there are two little ruffles and I want to emphasize those. So I just put a tiny bit of my darkest marker on those little sort of peaks where the shirt comes up a little bit or the, 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 fr the frill at the top of the shirt. And it just is going to make it look a little dimensional and look like there's a little bit of a wave to the top of her shirt. And then I'm going to, of course, put the shadows on the left side again, just because that's where I put them on her face. And then I will blend it out. I'm using BG 18, 15, 13, keeping it real simple. There is going to be a whole shadow along where the sort of top frilly part of the blouse meets the bottom. So that's another drop shadow that you'll want to add. Remember to be, if you want a higher contrast, to be really sparing with the amount of shadow color you add of your, your darkest color. So I have these backgrounds created and I'm going to place the lovely lady panels on top of it. I will use my ATG or my probably a combination of that and my Barely Arts glue just because I want it to hold really well. 
They both are pretty strong, but I'm finding with the warm weather, sometimes my ATG is not doing as well. So the Barely Arts glue is fantastic. Anyway, that's it for my cards today. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more craft tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I will leave you links to the products that I used in the video description below. And thank you so much for joining me. Have an awesome day. Bye.